Right now at 5.30, Hillary Clinton is making history as the first female presidential nominee of a major party. We'll have more coverage of the Democratic National Convention just ahead. That, of course, was her husband who addressed the convention last night. Also on WKYT this morning, in Richmond, a protest. As some folks say, police officers should be paid more. Details on that protest at City Hall on WKYT this morning. Today, Senator Rand Paul will be in Lexington as part of a series of town hall meetings to get the details of his visit ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it's so good to have you with us on WKYT as we get this Wednesday off and rolling. Here we are in the middle of summer. Still certainly feels like it. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. But, you know, we really have had a nice temperate, seemingly, as far as the temperatures go, summer. Uh, yeah, until the last until little bit. Until <laughs> recently. It's felt like right. summer. Let's check in with Micah because uh, tomorrow we get another change, right? Yeah, it's it's one of those times that it, it, during the summer, if you get the rain, it keeps temperatures down. If you do not, it allows temperatures to increase big time. The last week has been extremely hot with lower 90s for the past eight days. Now, I will tell you this. Before that, we didn't even hit 90 degrees. It wasn't even close because of the rain. And now we're back into that wet pattern where it keeps temperatures down. So it's good and bad. It's just one of those give and take type of situations. You look down toward Wayne County and see that thunderstorm rolling across 92. Uh, close to Monticello. Monticello, you did get the brunt of this, but now it's just to the east of you guys. It's uh, kind of close to the Gregory area. Just rolled through that area and heading toward northern portions of McCurry County. There's also some back toward Monroe County, Cumberland County, and that's rolling northeast. So if you're sitting in Russell Springs, Jamestown, Lake Cumberland region, heads up because we do have some. It's heading your direction. If that sticks together, and we'll have that chance throughout the day. Guys, we're going to be talking about much lower conditions temperature wise and also much better chances at rain coming up in a few minutes. All right, so a little uh, give and take there. Thank you, Micah. Well, for the first time in American politics, Hillary Clinton is the first woman to win the presidential nomination of a major political party. She secured it during the roll call of states at the Democratic National Convention. Making history last night, Congressman John Yarmuth and state Democratic Chairman Cindy Sani Overly announced Kentucky's votes at the convention after mentioning that the Commonwealth is home to Muhammad Ali, the Kentucky Derby, and Kentucky Bourbon. In other words, in Kentucky, we know what a winner looks like. Madam Secretary, Kentucky's 60 delegates proudly cast 27 votes for Senator Bernie Sanders and 33 votes for the next president of the United States of America, Secretary Hillary Rodgers. Hillary Clinton's husband, former President Bill Clinton, then headlined night two of the convention. And Jamie Yukas has the latest from Philadelphia. Hillary Clinton made a surprise satellite appearance at the DNC last night with a message to young women watching her make history. I may become the first woman president, but one of you is next. Thank you all. I can't wait to join you. Moments before, former President Bill Clinton delivered a deeply personal address, during which he spoke about his partnership with his wife and called her a changemaker. Hillary will make us stronger together. You know it because she spent a lifetime doing it. I hope you'll elect her. The former Secretary of State became the first woman to be nominated for president with help from her former rival, Bernie Sanders. And I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. After Clinton was declared the nominee, angry Sanders supporters walked off the floor. Not everyone is ready to support Hillary Clinton as the nominee, despite Bernie Sanders using roll call for his state of Vermont to try to unify the party. Dozens of demonstrators rallied outside the arena late into the night. Some Sanders delegates say it's time to move on. You will vote for Hillary Clinton this fall, even as a Bernie delegate. Yes, I will. He has asked us to do that, so I will do that um, as a loyal Democrat. President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden will address the convention tonight. Jamie Yukis, CBS News, Philadelphia.
And one of the first speakers of the day at the convention was Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, a friend of the Clinton family. Grimes stressed Hillary Clinton's support for equal rights for all Americans. More than anything else, she loves to listen. The Hillary I know fights for all people through causes we have both championed, including equal pay. Grimes also offered some insights into Clinton's personal side, calling her a family-oriented grandmother. Clinton will be formally accepting the Democratic nomination for president tomorrow. Today, Senator Rand Paul will continue his town hall meetings. He was in eastern Kentucky yesterday, as was Lexington Mayor Jim Gray, campaigning ahead of the annual Fancy Farm Picnic in western Kentucky. Today, Senator Paul will be in Campton, Stanton, Lexington, and Shelbyville. He'll be in Campton at 10.30 this morning at the Wolf County U.S. Co-op Extension Service Office on North Washington Street. Senator Paul will then go on to Stanton. The meeting will be at 11.45 at the Brookside Community Center on Willow Bend Way. Then he'll be in Lexington at Central Library on Main Street. That meeting set for 1.30 this afternoon. That will be in the library's conference room A. And then he will host a meeting in Shelbyville, 4 p.m. at the Stratton Community Center on Washington Street. All right, so uh, bring your questions for those uh, town hall meetings. A group in Richmond protesting that police officers there are not paid enough. The pay scale for Richmond police has been an issue in the city for years now. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Richmond with more on a protest right outside City Hall. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Police officers' wives picketed that city commission meeting yesterday. They're frustrated because police officers here in Richmond get paid less than other officers in the area, while the city has a surplus in their budget of millions of dollars. So they're calling for a new pay scale that would give mid-level patrol officers a raise every two years. Right now, officers see a 1% raise every four years, and it appears that is hurting the department. In just the past seven months, 15 officers have left the force, most of them taking better paying jobs with other departments. When officers start off in Richmond, their salaries are competitive with other cities in the area. However, after a few years on the job, their pay starts to fall far behind those other officers. While there are millions of surplus dollars on hand in the city's budget, the department is down to 31 full-time patrol officers. That number is ridiculous when you think about it. Four or five officers working at a time for this entire city. People don't understand business, it compounds. So if it's a million dollars this year, it's a million three next year, a million four. If it grows, it doesn't. If it stays stagnant, it wouldn't be a problem. The mayor says this issue is certainly not as simple as it might seem. He says he is researching the proposed pay scale to see whether it will be feasible. Now the commission will take up the issue in three weeks during their next work session. Live in Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, we'll be following up. Thank you very much, Mark. Today, a group protesting police brutality will be marching in Lexington. Their protest is in response to this month's shooting of Elton Sterling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It will be at 6 o'clock this evening at the Fayette County Courthouse. There are two different police appreciation events happening today in Somerset. The Silent Guard and Gold Star Chili are co-sponsoring a First Responders Appreciation Day. All first responders can stop by the Somerset Gold Star Chili between 10 this morning and 9 tonight for a free meal. And Somerset's 106.1, a radio station partnering with Jimmy Johns to honor law enforcement today as well. They're asking that people in the community Community, honk their car horns at 12:15 to show support. They'll also take sandwiches to police and sheriff's deputies. New this morning, a Boyle County couple arrested after police found them living in a shed with three children. Deputies say Gregory Wilkerson and Brandy Harmon were living in a shed behind a home on Lebanon Road. Police say there was no electricity, no running water. There was a bucket of feces. The three children were taken to the hospital with extreme rashes and bug bites. Wilkerson and Harmon are charged with criminal abuse of a child. More information is coming out about the investigation into a deadly building collapse in Louisville. Part of the building collapsed Friday, killing John Dozier. Newly released documents show two days earlier the Louisville Fire Department had warned that the building was unstable. Firefighters also requested that building inspectors take a look. But the collapse happened three days before the planned inspection. Documents show firefighters had received other complaints about the building earlier this year. 
A University of Kentucky professor will be partnering with Agriculture is America today. Uh, he'll be answering questions about the Zika virus. Dr. Grayson Brown will be answering questions from 2 to 3 this afternoon on Twitter. Participating Twitter handles include at UK Agriculture and at Ag is America. To follow the conversation or to submit your own question, you can use the hashtag Ag is Chat. A former Kentucky governor has been honored with a statue in his hometown. The statue of former Governor Paul Patton was unveiled yesterday on the University of Pikeville campus where he was once president. He said he is humbled by the statue and calls it a monument to his life's work. The statue now stands at the foot of the University of Pikeville's 99 steps. Powerball fever is once again sweeping the nation. Michelle Chamberlain is at our alert desk with details. Yeah, the Powerball jackpot is up to $422 million thanks to nearly three months without a winner of the big prize. If anyone matches the five balls in red Powerball in tonight's drawing, it will be the game's first jackpot winner since May 7th. A jackpot winner could opt for the $422 million to be paid out over 29 years or a $291 million lump sum. The prize would rank as the nation's 11th largest. Now, the chance of winning Powerball is incredibly small at $292 million to one. But players do have much better odds of about 1 in 25 of winning smaller prizes. Those small prizes range from $4 to $1 million. So good luck to everyone out there playing. There you go. Yeah. Hope your numbers come in. And it's time to check live drive traffic this morning on your Wednesday. Let's see what's going on early out there right now with a look at the traffic map. A whole lot of nothing. <laughs> it looks like, I mean, it's good to go. Here's a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam. This one's set up in a little more uh, lively of a shot there at Main Street and Newtown Pike. Folks are moving along fine. We have no reports of any early delays this morning, and that is good. And those uh, construction projects that, that they had uh, going on yesterday, uh, such as on Man of War and Clays Ferry Bridge and so forth, uh, hopefully all that is uh, done. So it should be uh, good to go today. Yeah. More news coming up on WKYT this morning and Wednesday. The St. Louis Police Department taking a chilling approach to bridging gaps in its community. More on the ice cream truck. They're hoping that will bring people together coming up back up this morning. Yeah, it took me an extra 10 minutes because of that traffic trouble. So just keep in mind, heads up for some of those closures. We'll get you updated on that coming up, but also some soggy days ahead. We'll get that forecast just a few minutes. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, this thunderstorm continues to move toward the east, and it's building just to the south of that, too. So it's kind of making a right turn just a bit. You don't see this very often, right around the Highway 92 corridor in McCreary County. Whitley City, more than likely, you'll be next in line as it continues to build. But Whitley City northbound, going to the Greenwood community, right along 27 corridor. That's going to be an area that kind of gets the brunt of this. You're hitting, hearing some thunder off in the distance. Remember, this is no severe weather, just beneficial rain to the yards, and it's kind of waking a few of us up. But that's the only thing we have going on right now. Frankfurt at 73, Lexington coming in at 74. We are dry. Check this out. Past seven out of eight days, seven out of eight days has featured highs anywhere from 90 degrees to 95. We hit 92 yesterday. So the past seven out of eight days have been really, really hot. Before that, it wasn't so hot. And why was that? If you, can, if you can remember back two weeks ago, it was just a lot of rain. It was one day after another. And guess what we're doing now? Dropping those temperatures because of rain one day after another. 87 degrees for today. You could get a 90 degree reading here or there because it's hit and miss once again. If you don't get the rain, you'll be at 90 degrees. If you do, look what the rain does. Drops your temperature. This is 3 p.m. This is getting close to the peak heating hour of the day. You're 75 degrees. That's what the rain does. So look for the afternoon hours to spark up once again. It looks like the rain's going to travel through here uh, from this particular model anywhere from 1 p.m. to about 6 p.m. That's your best bet. 7 p.m. still looks like a few showers are laying around, and it looks like uh, that will go throughout the night and into tomorrow. Now, tomorrow morning, we'll still hold on to some showers, thunderstorms, and that's going to go through the afternoon, too, there on Thursday. Thursday, there's no doubt about it, 100% confident that we will see the best chance of rain on Thursday. It's not the only chance as it looks like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Still chances there. I'd keep your plans. A lot of events going on. Keep your plans, but just know that you might have to dodge a passing shower thunderstorm. Now, Thursday, 
I don't know if you should keep your plans because it looks uh, like a pretty good chance you will get hit by at least a shower or thunderstorm as you go through the day. Off and on all day long. Soaking yep. rain. All right. Okay. Thank you, Micah. 548 now. Well, St. Louis police have a new tool for outreach an ice cream truck. <laughs> right. Officers will be giving out free ice cream treats at events, at parks, and schools throughout the city. It's all part of Operation Polar Cops. The St. Louis Police Foundation purchased the new ice cream truck, and 6,000 ice cream treats and frozen novelties have been donated to stock it. Officers say it's a way to build relations between police and the community that gets kids involved. St. Louis Police Chief Sam Dotson says he hopes the truck will make a lasting impression on kids and that is also a good childhood memory. All right, so getting out there with them. We had uh, the other day a little uh, clip on Twitter of uh, some Richmond officers out with squirt guns here in All Kentucky right. with the kids. And they, had, <laughs> uh, they had some fun you know, spraying each yeah. other on that hot day. And we're glad you're with us on WKYT this morning. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news right now. Also, we'll be checking traffic for you. We have some health news and we have a whole lot more. You are really just getting underway here on WKYT this morning. We're sure glad you're with us. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Good morning. So good to have you with us. WKYT here on this Wednesday, right in the middle of the week. We have a lot going on. It's 5.52 right now. Let's get a look at some of the stories we're working on for you at this hour. A group in Richmond protesting for better pay for the police there. The acting Richmond Police Chief Robert Mott says this year 15 officers have already left the force. Most of them have gone to other law enforcement agencies. Right now, the city's entry-level salary is competitive with other cities, but more senior officers, the pay there is not. It falls way behind. We're looking into that this morning. One of three escapees in so southeastern Kentucky is back behind bars. Bobby Holman was arrested in Bell County last night. Police are still looking for Gary Mills and Raymond Farr, the other two men who escaped with Holman yesterday. President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden will deliver remarks at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia today. Their addresses come just one day after Hillary Clinton was named the first female presidential nominee of a major political party in this country. Former President Bill Clinton spoke to his wife's character on the second day of the convention while diehard Bernie Sanders supporters protested outside. Meanwhile, the FBI is continuing to investigate a massive breach involving the Democratic National Committee's email. Yesterday, the president revealed that experts have attributed the hack to Russia. Thousands of the leaked emails appeared to show Democratic Party officials favoring Clinton over Sanders in the Democratic primaries. Get ready for more carpool karaoke. And meet the actresses who are proud to call themselves bad moms. Chris Martinez has your eye on entertainment. Apple Music and CBS Television Studios are teaming up for a new Carpool Karaoke series. It will be based on the wildly popular segment from The Late Late Show with James Corden. 16 episodes will stream on Apple Music. There is no premiere date yet. Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and the rest of the stars of the new comedy Bad Moms dressed up for the Los Angeles premiere of the movie. Kunis leads a trio of stressed out moms who rebel against the impossible expectations placed on them. I'm not going to ever give advice to moms, but I'll say this. If you're having a child and you're about to give birth, make a reservation at any restaurant four weeks after you give birth to make sure that you and your husband or you and your partner reconnect. Bad Moms comes from the same team behind The Hangover. It opens Friday. Breaking Bad's Anna Gunn walked the red carpet in New York for her new movie about Wall Street called Equity. Gunn plays an investment banker fighting her way up the corporate ladder. It's really about her struggle and the struggle of the other two women in the film and how they interact with each other. Equity opens in limited release this Friday. Took a job looking for some men to join me. Is it difficult? Impossible. And the star-studded remake of The Magnificent Seven is set to open the Toronto Film Festival in September. The film festival is considered a launching pad for awards season contenders. That's your eye on entertainment. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. 
All right, let's get a check right now on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. See what's going on out there at just about four minutes before six o'clock. Here is a look at current travel times into or out of Richmond from Nicholasville. It's a, qu a quick ride in. Looks good as well uh, in most of the other cities, Paris, uh, Frankfurt, uh, Richmond. Normal travel times into Lexington this morning. We're looking now at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive camera at Maine and Newtown, and it's a little bit quiet right now just before the city comes to life. We'll, of course, uh, keep you updated as we approach the rush hour. Officer Don will be in shortly. We expect another hot one today. It's tomorrow. We're really keeping an eye out for the increase in these showers. Yeah, and Mike is going to tell us all about it. Yeah, during July, August, I mean, back toward June and May, you're talking about bringing rain in that actually brings the temperatures down. You don't really have cold fronts roll through and just knock and blast down temperatures. It's the rain that helps us out. It's the cloud cover. We're seeing that down towards southern Kentucky at this moment as these storms continue to churn down into the Cumberland, Monroe, Clinton, and also Wayne and McCurry counties. And that's falling apart over toward McCurry County. So there's some good news for you guys. 87 by the afternoon. More hit and miss thunderstorms in the forecast today. Some will see it, some will not. But tomorrow, everybody, virtually everybody, We'll see rain tomorrow. It's heavy rain. We're going to get into that. I'll show you those numbers coming up with another hour of WKYT News.